My name is Zeke Brinsfield, and I'm here uh, today representing myself. Um, from an employee standpoint, my um, employer is not, yeah. You're just, you can say you're self-employed or, the, or yes. you don't want to, what, what, you can say today you don't want to name your employer if that's. Yeah, is that, is that acceptable? Yes, that, because, yeah, we understand why. Uh, Glenda Brinsfield, I am Norian. Uh, and I also would not like to name my employer. Mike Simmons, and I'm employed by Tyson Foods. I'm Charlotte Cox. I'm an employee of Washington Regional Medical System. I'm representing myself today. Okay. Y'all, if y'all will be seated, we're going to start with Mr. Simmons. And uh, if you will excuse the fact that as we go longer, uh, members have to leave. Uh, this is still being live streamed. Uh, with lots of people watching, and it's recorded, and many of our members come back and watch uh, later. I uh, know I do, so if I can't be at a meeting, or can't be at all of a meeting. So, uh, uh, glad to have you here today, and uh, Mr. Simmons, we're going to start with you. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, so, like I said, uh, Mike Simmons, I've been working for Tyson for 14 years uh, this past July. Uh, my wife, Whitney, and I have three kids. Barrett is four, Austin's three, and Gabrielle is 18 months. Uh, my wife was recently diagnosed with cancer, and at the same time, we found out we're pregnant with number four. So a little blessing sprung and spread in there as well. Uh, so with that said, um, August 3rd, I believe, uh, the announcement came out from Tyson that uh, people would either need to go against their conscience and become vaccinated, or essentially you had up to two weeks, really, uh, to get fully vaccinated so that you will be fully vaccinated by October 1st. Uh, so I think 9-17 would be the last date you had to be vaccinated to accommodate. Um, we are also, uh, through my wife's breast cancer, uh, she's going to have surgery this Thursday, and our oncologist is in the same boat as a lot of people, uh, and he does not feel that he's going to be around in, uh, past October to do any subsequent surgeries that we are definitely going to need. So it's just, I'm here to show that this is an impact on people's lives. Uh, it's, it's people with, uh, that are essentially really being held hostage through, through coercion uh, to either give up your paycheck, insurance, severance, or get the vaccine. What's your choice? And uh, I'm in a good position. Uh, financially, the Lord has blessed me. Uh, and I'm in a position to where I can speak up for people that aren't willing to stand here and understandably and name your company uh, because they have us in a very difficult position. Uh, and there's people with valid concerns, medical, philosophical, religious, uh, yet uh, many of them, and even through our own process, they said they would allow religious and medical exemptions, but in their own words, the process would be rigorous. Um, and many feel that they're going to be singled out if even if they have a viable religious reason They feel like they're going to be singled out and your career is going to be limited uh, Many people there's executives at both companies I have friends obviously in Northwest Arkansas that work at both Walmart Tyson and surrounding areas uh, and many uh, some have already left some have Unfortunately, I already got vaccinated, and I say unfortunate. I'm not anti-vaccination, but I'm anti you doing something against your conscience. And it, it pains me to see and hear people that are going against their conscience just for a paycheck. When I stand in front of the Lord and he asks me, Mike, why did you get the vaccine? I'm not going to say because of a paycheck. I'm going to say because I was convinced that I needed it, and I was taking advantage of the wisdom of modern medicine that you gave me. But I will not say, I did it because of my paycheck. And that's what I pray that a lot of other people would be able to do as well. And just like my oncologist, 28 years of surgery, one of the best, most gifted in the area, and he's willing to sacrifice his position because he has a conscience and conviction and he will not go against it. And I appreciate that from him and I appreciate that from you guys that are up here as well. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'll be brief. My name is Charlotte Cox. I'm a doctor of physical therapy at Washington Regional Medical System in Fayetteville. I'm a proud Arkansan. I was born and raised here, and now my husband and I raise our three children here. I walked these halls in grade school learning about citizen participation in government, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to speak before you today. 
Both my husband and I have been honored to provide care as servants for our Northwest Arkansas community for the past 13 years. I love my job. I love my hospital. I feel I'm living up to my calling as a pelvic health specialist, and I treat chronic pain. It is so incredibly fulfilling to be able to witness the healing and restored hope of patients in my office every week. However, I feel now that my ability to continue serving in that capacity is now in danger. I'm facing the real possibility that I may be terminated as a consequence of my faith, though I feel better about that after listening to testimony today. Because of the First Amendment, protecting religious freedom never before has such a violation of liberty ever been considered or occurred in America. Several tenets of my faith prohibit me from receiving the experimental COVID-19 gene therapy injection, and it would violate my conscience before God to participate in it. I'm grateful that unlike most other companies, my employer has been forthcoming, recognizing and providing an application for religious exemption, though I have not yet received that confirmation. During my years in higher education and clinical practice, I've been responsible for both conducting and reviewing research. Although I have extensively read all the studies to date on COVID-19 vaccines, I'm not here to debate numbers or data. Instead, I'm appealing to you as a healthcare provider to continue standing on the side of human rights, on the side of your constituents that you represent, on the side of thousands of people who, you, who have reached out to you this week to defend their sincerely held religious beliefs as you also want your own religious beliefs respected. To continue standing on the side of thousands of community members, like my husband and I, who love and literally put our lives on the line for our patients, who may now be without jobs because of a mandate that violates the Constitution and our conscience. I'm asking you to continue standing in defense of the Nuremberg Code and Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. I'm asking you to continue standing on the side of justice for the people over corporations with deep pockets. Hmm. I'm asking you to protect businesses from increasing their workers' compensation claims due to employee side effects from a mandated injection. I'm asking you to stand in defense of bodily autonomy and informed consent as we simply do not have a complete list of ingredients, it is not on the fact sheet, for these injections because manufacturers are not required to release a complete list while the experimental product is under emergency use authorization. I fully support my colleagues' right to choose what happens to their bodies, and I'm asking you to continue supporting all humans' right to choose as well. You see, I'm not afraid for my own career, for risking my career, because God is my defender, but I will be a voice for those who have no voice to defend their human right to make their own medical choices instead of handing over that right to their employer. Amen. I am obviously not an immunologist, but I do know that there is zero long-term safety data of any sort for these vaccines, as has already been mentioned today. I do know there is zero short-term safety data for, pe data for people like myself with a history of autoimmune diagnoses. I would submit to you that funding one's own research on a liability-free product while simultaneously projecting multiple billions in profit on that product is a conflict of interest. I would submit to you that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services coercing healthcare providers into vaccination on penalty of a 25% reduction in their reimbursement beginning this October 1st, 2021, is enough pressure by itself. I would submit to you that it is a false dichotomy to insinuate that an employee unable to receive the vaccine is malicious or ignorant or unwilling to protect the community by other well-documented means. You see, in addition to my religious beliefs, on a personal level, I very nearly died four years ago from an autoimmune blood clotting disorder associated with thrombocytopenia, which has been mentioned today, that was a result of a vaccine I received in college. I also witnessed my father, a lifelong healthcare provider in Arkansas as well, nearly die of Guillain-Barre syndrome as a result of a flu vaccine. 
it would be a breach of medical privacy for employees to have to disclose personal medical history such as this to an employer just in order to earn a living for their family in Arkansas. And it is a violation of medical freedom and human rights to require such people to subject their bodies to another significant risk of injury or death. As the FDA themselves specified being a condition of EUA, where there is risk, there must be choice. I'm asking the legislature, and I'm not sure how this works, I'm asking the legislature to reconvene to address this issue before the deadlines, after which people will lose their jobs and it's too late. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I know that your desire is for the protection and equal rights of all Arkansans. Thank you. Thank you for listening and, and speaking today. This is not about politics or being pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine, but about human rights and medical choice, which I know is something we all agree on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brinsfield? Yes, sir. Senator Clark, thank you for inviting my wife and I here today. My name is Zeke Brinsfield, and this is my wife, Glenda. Um, I'm a integration engineer working in healthcare, and the reason that I did not share uh, my company's name, they're not an Arkansas-based company. Um, I'm, I, I had the opportunity to work from home. Um, however, being in my position, I have uh, implemented um, in every major hospital in the state of Arkansas uh, medication applications uh, for hospital information systems to manage uh, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals. Um, I've and this mandate that's going to hit the hospitals here that is, is rolling out across uh, the metro would prohibit uh, individuals like myself from being able to work uh, within those environments because of the contracting uh, association between business partner agreements. And we see this as also, um, also carry a, um, a clearance working for the government for uh, the Defense Health Agency. And we're having mandates. We know that Mandates have been established from um, our president to uh, also extend to contractors that do business with the government. And so these would directly impact the current position that I'm in. And this is no um, place where I would uh, ever want to bring shame to the, my, the organization that I work for. It's a fantastic company, wonderful company. But I believe many business owners and I believe many leaders have been given a lot of information that has been uh, allowed fear and business is also ran by legal teams as well. And we mitigate risk. We look at which way is going to be the um, um, most advantageous direction for us to go when it comes to implementing policies in our businesses. And this is something that I do believe uh, with the current legislation that's in place that we will see um, more and more businesses move in this direction because of lawyers. And we do need your help to protect us in this. We do need your help to be able to establish laws that would give us rights in these moments. My wife and I are also uh, pastors and elders uh, of Tent Builders Fellowship in Benton, Arkansas. We found, a, we found a nonprofit organization, Gilgal Ministries, which is dedicated to helping men and women uh, overcome life-controlling circumstances such as drug addiction and depression. Our ministry has zero paid staff members. Every single member of our ministry, from the pastors uh, to the elders uh, to the men and women that serve daily in our ministry, providing counseling services, providing uh, Bible studies, uh, discipleship, uh, all do it based off of the provisions that God has made through our work, through our jobs. We've built six homes uh, to house men and women in, to live out time while they're overcoming these life controlling circumstances. We have uh, also built a pregnancy care home for women that allow them to be able to live out the pregnancy, learning to be moms, or if they're in dangerous situations, being able to escape from those. And all of this is, has um, been brought about in our community to make our community better, but it is all also associated to the work that we do. And without the livelihood that we have and without the incomes that we have, the downstream effect of those that we've been given charge over by the Lord will be impacted as well. Now, <laughs> I love the boldness 
And I love the confidence that we have in our, in our Father. And, um, and we know that there is a way that He will make for every one of us in this moment. And that may be you making that way. It may be the testimonies that we give today that gives you the courage to do something that others may be unwilling to do. The Lord has blessed us with skills working in technology uh, as medical professions. We are both nurses to improve health care globally. Uh, we, we, we came here today to give testimony of the impact to our lives of how a forced vaccination mandate would invade our home, family, and livelihood to be able to continue to serve our community, nation, and world uh, with the skills that God has given us. Now, I've spent 20 years in healthcare as a nurse. And I love my job. It's a great job. I love the company that I work for. I think that we save lives daily. The, the community is definitely better because we're there. We have a son that's an active duty military serving in the U.S. Air Force. We love our country. We love the freedoms that the Declaration of Independence define, the Constitution establishes, and the Bill of Rights mandate. We know that it's not unprecedented for vaccinations to be mandated, such as the polio vaccine, but that took much longer to develop and had proper testing. Uh, we understand the rights of the people of America to establish laws, to create order and maintain stability, to protect human life. I'm in favor of those things. But the mandate of the COVID-19 vaccination is unprecedented for nu numerous reasons. Uh, the de development of it has happened faster than any other vaccine has ever been developed before. It has had limited testing. It's not received FDA approval. And what I give testimony today is the possible adverse reactions that I have observed and the challenge for reporting and tracking pertaining to those adverse reactions. So I'm just going to start where it hit home first. I want to start with my parents. My father's a Methodist minister and he has been for 50 years. And after his first dose of, the, of two of the COVID-19 vaccination, he, he ended up with a very severe case of shingles. Months, he was m very miserable after, with, with these shingles. After my mother, who I want to add is perfectly healthy. She's not had any health problems at all. <clears throat> She's not on any blood thinners. After her first uh, injection of the COVID-19 vaccination, she ended up, her arm swelled real bad and uh, she broke out in a rash. She reported- Could you pull the mic closer? <sighs> sure. <laughs> she reported this to her doctor and all he did was schedule her second COVID vaccination. So after her second COVID, uh, COVID vaccination, my mother went unresponsive at the dinner table, falling to the floor, requiring my 80-year-old father to administer CPR to her while they waited for, the, for an ambulance to arrive. Uh, the medical team arrived and revived her. She was taken to a local hospital, and the lab work indicated that her hemoglobin and hematocrit were critically low. She received two units of packed red blood cells. Um, <clears throat> she was diagnosed with a GI bleed, She's never had anything like this before and not on blood thinners. There's absolutely no reason for a healthy person to have a GI bleed. Uh, she was discharged the following day to be followed closely by a medical team. She, uh, and they have followed her closely. She's had upper and lower GI. She's had bi-weekly lab drawn, but we have watched over the last two months her hemoglobin and hematocrit continue to drop. She's still bleeding somewhere and they don't know where. <clears throat> she ended up having to have two, un two more units of packed red blood cells last week for this critically low, um, we call it H&H. &H. Uh, let's see here. She, and she, she's going to follow up with a hematologist and a GI doctor this month. But I talked to her, doctor, to her doctor about the possibility of this being an adverse reaction to the vaccine, and he would not even hear me out. He dismissed it immediately. And I thought that was very interesting that he wouldn't even consider, I was just asking him to consider the possibility. Is anyone reporting this? Who do we report it to? If this could be a possible um, adverse reaction to the vaccine. Uh, and I also, I received a text um, this morning from a friend of mine who's also a nurse and, a, and colleague, and she had started talking about she had the, all the adverse reactions that are unreported from PEs, fast irregular heart, rate, heart rates on young, healthy adults. I've also seen other GI bleeds um, who have received the, the vaccine. And I'm not saying that it is um, definitely an adverse reaction from the vaccine, but who do we report it to? Why are we not reporting? It just seems like there is something off with the reporting and the study of the adverse reactions of these vaccines. We know that there's some reporting, but how many people in hospitals are even considering that these symptoms 
could be possible adverse reactions uh, to the vaccine. In a rush, our best efforts to reduce the impact of COVID-19 through a vaccine campaign, I believe, is evidence that we could put more people at risk than we actually save. If accurate information was made, avail made available pertaining to diagnosis, the host, the vaccination, all of us would have enough information to make an educated decision about our own personal health. But we are overran with conflicting information found from news sources that seem to change every other day. Our news, sound, our news sources sound more like propaganda to me than anything else. So shouldn't we let the people be able to make informed decisions with what is best for their own family regarding risk versus benefits? I think most people would agree that if we had accurate information that we could make good decisions about our own health. I believe that I work at one of the top healthcare facilities in the nation. I work with some of the most talented surgeons, nurses, respiratory therapists, and we provide excellent care to our patients. I worked through the pandemic of 2020. I was in contact with patients that had COVID. I saw firsthand the devastating impact uh, that this disease had, and I was proud of the response of the, of, the, of the metro hospitals here in Little Rock that they had. I saw many nurses, many friends, many colleagues that worked tirelessly to take the very best care, do the very best care, uh, the very best they could in these uh, very difficult situations. We exposed our families to this risk. I undressed, I undressed nightly in the garage. Before I even walked into the house, I had to take my clothes off in the garage and I had to tell my five-year-old son that he couldn't hug me until I had a shower because I had germs. So we feel very passionate in our family about caring for the mental, the physical, and the spiritual health of all people. And in light of the testimony I give you, I am intellectually incapable of receiving a vaccination based on the observed potential risk and limited tracking of those risks because of a rush to force a vaccination mandate. I've worked at four local hospitals and a nursing home all within uh, this area during my career, and none of them uh, man tr tried to mandate a flu vaccination, not one of them. In my mind, um, that we have to serve and put their life at risk for a period of time to not respect, we're not respecting the intellect and the religious freedom and the privacy regarding vaccination status. So I had to come today First of all, my father taught me to always stand for what is right, even if you stand alone. But also, I had the responsibility to our church to, to be a voice for them of righteousness. I have a responsibility to humanity to report my observations. And I had a responsibility to all of you, our elected officials, to share my experiences and knowledge and to help you with one of the most critical decisions you will be faced with in your lifetime. We will all stand before God with the choices that we make. My husband and I have been in the workforce since we were 15 and 16 years old. And we've dedicated our lives to making our community safer for our children and your children. And it's people like us that a forced mandate will put out of work. And as history not taught us anything, in 2020, all medical personnel were being regarded as frontline heroes. In 2021, some of us are going to go out in shame. 20 year veterans. My own supervisor has, um, she has resigned and she is irreplaceable. There is no one that can, can eyeball a patient like her and be able to just pinpoint little things that a new nurse would miss out on. So have we so, so quickly forgotten the moral and degrading ethical implications that that's these same beh behaviors had on our Vietnam veterans? They served their country and mankind well and came home to be rejected by their own people. I would hope that we've learned from our mistakes in the past. Thank you for your time.